Ole Miss fans need a hotel for the game weekend? Many OTAs keep all the commissions, but at Fan Plans, you still get your loyalty points, receive direct confirmation from the hotel, and you support Rebel Grove. Visit fanplans.com slash Rebel Grove today. Welcome into another edition of the Mason Brooks Show, presented by The Rogue. I'm Neil McCready. That is Ole Miss offensive lineman Mason Brooks. The day after, we're taping this on a Sunday afternoon, Ole Miss defeats Kentucky in a wild SEC game, 22-19. to Two really good teams, two really good programs, and that game comes down to the final minute. I think like a lot of people, self-included, thought it would. It did. It was a great game. Ole Miss now turns its attention to uh, its SEC road opener, the Rebels head to Vanderbilt. That's at 3 o'clock on Saturday in Nashville. That game can be seen, if you're not going, it can be seen on the SEC network. This show brought to you each and every week by The Rogue. It's your destination for fine men's clothing. Their stylist hand-select pieces from top designers. From work to lifestyle to nightlife, there's the perfect something for everyone at The Rogue. All the best items from Peter Millar, Martin Dingman, Jack Victor, Halsey, True Grit, Duckhead, so many other brands, 4450, I-55 North in Jackson, or therogue.com. I always think it's funny, Mason, that we're sponsored by The Rogue, and each and every Sunday we get together and do this, and it's a half-chill, half-get-going day for you, and so you're kind of relaxed, and it's a just work day for me, and I'm in here just T-shirt, and we're, you know, we're, not, we're not at all dressed for fine men's clothing at this point, but we could be, could be at another could time, be. and if and if we decide we can do a suits, we will, we can do a suits episode, we, we can dress do a up suits episode. Life. Yeah, get, get, <laughs> we could decked out at the rogue and, and and do it that way for sure. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm I'm really good. I'm I'm uh I'm, you know very pleased with not to rat poison not to rat poison us, but I'm I'm very I'm very happy with uh, how we pulled out yesterday. So, so your first SEC uh, game. Welcome to the league, my my man. That that uh, that's kind of what a lot of it's like it was crazy what a what a day i don't even want to, I'll, I'll just i mean it's your show i'll let you kind of care <laughs> um what sticks out uh the traffic was terrible that's what sticks out <laughs> i mean that was i was scrambling around on friday and uh trying to get stuff done i hidden and hinton um got me some different stuff to wear and so i was trying to get that ready to go and and handle a couple of things and grab some lunch and uh, it took me 35 minutes to get uh, through through the square, essentially, from one side of town to the other. Um, and I was like, you know what? Avoiding the square at all costs today. And then uh, we were getting ready to go on the bus to go to the hotel. And Eli called uh, Reese. Eli Acker called uh, Reese, my roommate. He said, I would leave now. I'm just sitting on the highway. And so we, we hustled on out of here. So that was uh, – there's, when they say there's a lot of people here, man, Oxford gets crowded. The Grove was crowded like I've never seen. Um, you know, I had butterflies the initial Grove, uh, you know, the first time I did the walk. Um, and then that kind of didn't go away, but I got a little bit more used to it. But it, it, it fully reloaded this weekend. I was uh, – I had the same giddy feeling as the first time I did the – I mean, not quite. Nothing's like that first walk, but um, it was pretty electric. The, the stadium – I mean, we got we got a loaded student section all four quarters. Uh, you know, the fans showed up. They were loud. They were involved. And that helps us so much. You know, I think Lane made a point on it this week. And uh, the fans answered. And, and that means a lot. And, you know, I think it showed the game. Uh, crunch downs for, for Kentucky, I think it affected them, um, you know, a lot. A lot more people realize. So. Yeah, I'm going to jump around to a number of things you just touched on. Uh, first, I'll tell you that I, I've I've been here a little longer than you have, and <laughs> it's my experience that you can tell on Thursday midday just how nutty it's going to be, like on a non like Tulsa or whatever. We yeah. played here, nothing against them or Central Arkansas, but like those Thursdays felt like a normal Thursday. It was like well, right, yeah, and and you're like, okay, it's going to be kind of tame. Um. You, you, you'll be able to tell, like, if some things go a certain way, that Alabama game coming up in about a month, um, 
it'll be you'll start noticing the town changing on Wednesday, maybe even mm-hmm. Tuesday afternoon. It gets by Thursday, it'll be an absolute zoo, and Friday will be chaos. So, um, yeah, it, you, you could tell, and you could feel it. You could feel it on Thursday because there were a lot of Kentucky people starting to pile in. So, the, oh, no, that the, surprised me too. I heard they bust them up here, so. They, they pulled out all the stops. Yeah, Listen. well, I mean, that's what happens. You get two nationally ranked teams going at each other in a, in a big game like that. There's going to be there's going to be tons of people. It's going to be wild, and and it was. Um, what was your? I, you, you talked about the walk of champions. Um, I mean, it was unlike anything you'd seen in the first three games. When when did you kind of first realize as you were pulling up on the bus that oh wow, look at all of the people? It was. It was really like I put my I put my suit on and I my new hat, you know, I had my whole outfit on and I kind of was like Jerry before we even got on the bus because you could just kind of it sounds weird, but you could just kind of feel the energy was like different, like from the team and just from the and then when we were pulling up, it, it took so much longer because there was so much more clustering around the bus. And, you know, you can see as you come over the hill, um, you know, kind of behind the union. You can kind of see like the wave of people, and I just saw like you couldn't even see like it was just heads like all the way out, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is going to be nuts!" So, so you mentioned the crowd. Obviously, it was a tight game. Uh, two really good teams, two programs that have won a bunch in the last couple of years. That uh, were, I think both teams believed they were going to win. Both teams played that way. It showed. You mentioned the crowd. I want to get your thoughts because it kind of was down. Uh, there were a couple times. The fourth quarter, Kentucky had the football in Ole Miss territory with the chance to go ahead late. Uh, once AJ Finley made a play, uh, and then uh, you guys got the ball. Went three and out. They used their timeouts. They got the ball back after uh, Mason Fraser's punt, and they hit that big long play, fifty-one yards from uh, Will Levis to Barry and Brown to get down to the seven-yard line, and. This is where the crowd may very well have won a football game. Because I don't I don't know whether Levis rushed it or whether they didn't hear or whatever, but they threw what would have been a touchdown pass, but it got negated by a, a illegal shift penalty. They weren't set. Could you tell down there that they were the crowd was impacting what they were trying to do? I could tell earlier there was I think it was one of the first drives where the crowd picked up and Rodriguez uh and levis miscommunicated and he like he looked to hand it and he hit him in the back and then levis just had to run and he picked up like two or three and i knew right then i was like they're 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 clearly not communicating i put last year we played in the alamo dome obviously not the same thing but it, because it was a dome it was very loud um we played utsa in the conference championship game and i remember we didn't think we were gonna have to do silent count because we're like you know it's a and we ended up having to go to silent count. And I remember how stressful as a line, um, even if you're used to it, like a lot of these SEC linemen probably are, it it creates a new dynamic. And if it's really, really loud, it just kind of picks up everyone's nerves. So I could tell from that point on, I said, man, I hope I hope the crowd stays this involved because it it is get it is game breaking, it is game changing. You know, you hear people talk about uh, you know different stadiums and you know how loud they are and how hard they are to play, no matter how good a team is. Um, and you know, we have a squad that I think is capable of, as we keep showing people that is capable of greatness. You know, I don't think we're there yet by any stretch, but when you have the home advantage, you know, to match it, um, it, that's, that's when, when I think a team can be really special. And so, uh, it clearly showed on those downs, um, where they're scrambling and even the last one, you know, the coverage is good and the, the rush is good, but just finicky by the O-line you know, trying to get it off, trying to get protections off. When you bring, you know, crazy blitzes and stunts to that, it's really hard to pick up. So um, that was great to see, really great to see. Yeah, that set up, that that penalty set up the, the final play, of course, or the final play of, of any meaning. I know there were a couple of kneel downs from Dart, but the the final play that determined the game, the um, Jared Ivey comes around the edge against that fresh right tackle that had just come in because the other right tackle cramped up so bad. I was, it was funny. People were like booing, like they were stalling. I'm like, no, dude, he can't walk. I mean, oh, can, like the same thing. <laughs> I saw him, his whole leg lock up. I was like, oh, buddy, buddy is hurt. He was hurting already. Like, yeah. I could see him earlier. He yeah, people down. kept, they kept booing. And I was like, no. I mean, I, I was for it because, because I'm a rebel, but in my heart, I knew like as the tagline, I was like, 
bro is hurting. I yeah. know he's hurt. Because even after they got him up, he was like, no, I got to go back down. And they're like, no, no, come on. We got to get you off the field. And he was like, you could tell he was like, I can't move this leg. Um, Whole leg locked up. Yeah, he locked up big time. And then the other kid came in and he he got beat on that play. And, and the place just went nuts. And, and it was it was as loud as I've heard it in a long time. I, I've t- I told people yesterday that fans bitch about day games. But it's been my experience covering Ole Miss that it's louder in the daytime than it is at night. I don't, I don't know why. Just that that place looks different in the daytime than it does at night when it's full. I think everyone's just a little bit more fresh, maybe a little less inebriated. You know, it's still a little more cognizant. Yeah. Um, but no, it was. I'm telling you, it was. You talk about surreal moments in your career, and you know how many surreal moments do you have? And you know, obviously, probably surreal for the fans. But just the initial impact after that, I literally. I, I've probably been like open mouth amazed in like three games in my career. Like and one of them was a game in high school. We threw a game winning, basically a Hail Mary after being down 24 points. And that I would, I, this was just like, I was like in, in awe and, and, and so uh, just shocked. It was, it was awesome. I'll remember it forever. So you had a, a view of, of another, uh, another, contest that happened up in the stands right i mean I, I saw pictures of this and stuff but nobody ever put any context to it i, I couldn't tell if it happened before the game or, or or when it happened but there was uh there was a little there was a little uh you want to call it a scuffle a kerfuffle I, uh, <laughs> I was uh you know i'm playing my role as we've talked about so um you know i'm watching the guys and, and i'm encouraging and i'm you know getting the guys rolling and i'm trying to see what blitz packages they're bringing and where things are going so I can get those guys right when they come to the side. And uh, uh, someone told me, they're like, hey, man, they're, they're fighting up there. And I was like, what? And someone was like, damn, like, they really, they're really throwing up there. And I look up, and there's, like, just a brawl. And, and we were like, oh, okay, guy in the red shirt. And some guy in the red shirt was, like, throwing a couple of punches. And then this guy comes in and just slept him, like, just right hook, right in the chin. And we were like, ooh. Oh. And everyone was like, turn around, turn around. And so we all just turned around. But that was <laughs> uh, that was unreal. So the, the the energy of the stadium clearly shifted up into the uh, the base. So it was it was half, it got us got us cranked on the field. So that was that was I, something. Though. I heard at the end there was a fight in the Kentucky section between two big Kentucky fans. Like they went at each other. Supposedly it was it was. Quite I think a, I saw a clip of that day. where they were dragging one of the guys out. It's just hey. It was a rowdy day. It was a rowdy day for pound for pound. So, uh, not complaining, man. Rowdy sport. I like rowdy fans. Let's do it. So, you speak about your role. Obviously, you didn't play a lot yesterday. They reshuffled the offensive line. Um, I know Caleb wasn't going to play, and then he, they felt like he had to play. Um, from an offensive line standpoint, you guys keep sort of trying to find a, an identity, a, a, a rhythm. Where do you kind of think that is right now? Um, I think the identity is next man up, play where you put them. Uh, you know, you got you got Pettis playing right tackle now. You got Jeremy playing right guard, Eli playing center. That's three guys playing that never play next to each other. You got Caleb coming in, Jerm moved back out to right tackle when when uh Pettis caught a little cramp or whatever happened there, he came back in. And um, you know, coach told us at the beginning of the year, and we talked about it, you know, it, the more linemen you have that can play. Um, you know, the better, uh, obviously paired with the elite play of Quinshawn Judkins and Zach Evans, just throwing that out there again, those boys are legit. I'm going to keep saying it every week cause it's fact. Um, but you know, when we have, uh, really eight and, you know, eight guys that can go in and not skip a beat, um, that's a pretty good place to be. I remember watching the Natty last year and watching Georgia's lineman, their right tackle or somebody went down. And the freshman came in and, and almost looked just as good, if not better. Um, and I was like, dang, like to be able to have that kind of crazy depth, um, that's how you really win championships, I think. Because, um, you know, I keep hearing SEC play, SEC play, like, um, you know, it's a, it's a long stretch, it's a long stretch, and, and we're already seeing it. Um, but to be able to go in and perform like I think we did up front, and it, I mean, it wasn't perfect. Um, you know, you're always chasing perfection, but – there's a lot of stuff we need to clean up. Um, but when you're able to just shuffle guys around and not really see a huge drop off, not really see guys just getting blown up and, you know, sacks left and right. And Dart has a lot of time. 
that's encouraging. Uh, that's encouraging as a player. And it's, you know, I think it's encouraging for the team to see. So I think our identity right now is just put me wherever coach, you know, let's roll. And, uh, and I think people are seeing that firsthand. And I don't know if that's been necessarily a, a, a mantra here on the O-line for the past couple of years. I think it's kind of um, been more of a madhouse. And so it's good to have some stability and instability, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that was a talented team, talented front seven that you guys were going up against yesterday. That's, that's, yeah. a, that's a good football team over there. Um, so you guys get into the top 10. You mentioned rat poison earlier. You're, there's there's going to be rat poison served, um, whether everybody likes it or not. It's, it's going to get served in heaping helpings here the next few days because you knocked off a top 10 team, and now you're in the top 10 at number nine in the, in the latest Associated Press top 25. Do you sense – because I sensed a week ago that everybody was like, hey, we can't play like we played against Tulsa when we play in the SEC. We've got to get got to get locked in. And you guys did. Now you coming off a win, sometimes it's the hardest thing is to handle prosperity. A lot of teams handle adversity because everybody's in everybody's grill and everybody's got everybody's attention and you're locked in and you're focused. And You guys had prosperity now. How do you sense that's going to be handled in the building? Um, I think if you look at the Georgia Tech-Tulsa curve, um, you know, I, history repeats itself, um, but – I think that this is a team that learns from its mistakes. Um, and so I'm excited to see um, how we look back and say, look, here's, here's, we, you know, we, we beat a good Georgia Tech. Honestly, Georgia Tech beat Pitt this week. So I'm not saying yeah. anything for Georgia Tech, but, sure. you know, we beat the Georgia Tech team. Um, you know, we, we have a down week. We beat this really good Kentucky team. Um, let's not have another down week. You know, let's, let's keep this momentum going. Um, and I think that a lot of guys are going to immediately come back in. Um, and say, look, like we, we got to keep rolling. And, uh, you know, there's some stipulations on Vandy. There, there always has been, it seems like. Um, but Vandy's a good squad this year. I mean, it's a good Vandy team. Um, you know, I know people like to talk about Vandy or whatever, but I, I think SEC any given week, look at Missouri, look at what Missouri did this week. Absolutely. Uh, you know, any, <laughs> they all get SEC recruits. I mean, you're not, and, and it's, so these group of fives with the transfer portal and all this jazz, you, it's it's more even than it's ever been. We've seen more upsets this year than I think we ever have, um, and that's the that's the landscape of college football. Um, and so you know, as we move forward, I, we had a really locked in week this week, and when it came down to crunch time, I think we were locked in. Um, special teams has to improve, some different sides improve. Um, you know, defense kind of pulled us out of a hole this week. I would like to see more execution on offense and, you know, that starts in the week, but, uh, you know, to your point, um, you have to be careful with these high, it, it is, it's, it's almost easier to handle failure because I feel like in turn, you can turn around and say, man, like we got to go. Whereas like, it's really easy. And it's kind of human nature to say, you know, we're, we're this, we're that. And, and that's yeah. why I love that poison and what, and what Kiffin says about that. So yeah, because it's easy to go. Okay, I'm pissed off. I mean, we didn't we didn't handle this right, and we're going to get locked. It, it, it's easy to get locked in like that for a week or so, and and then when the success comes, it's it can be difficult. Um, all right, for you going to Nashville, you're going to be about an hour from maybe I guess about an hour from where you uh, you played most of your college football there in Bowling Green. How many uh, friends and stuff are coming down to see you? Yeah, uh, it's going to be good. I have a lot of uh, a lot of buddies that are going to make that drive and. Um, it's cool because I, I think I have a group of friends that's going to come up from Texas just because Nashville's an easy travel, um, you know, trip. Not that that feels like a home home game necessarily, but, you know, Nashville's more of an old stomping ground for me. And we spent many weekends uh, out there on on Broadway. And, um, you know, so that that's going to be fun for me to, to kind of go back there to something that I'm a little bit more familiar with and experience that. Um, so I'm excited and I'm excited to play at Vandy. And, uh, you know, they always say – BYOJ to Vandy and XYZ, you know, I hope that we ignore all that, uh, you know, crap and just go in there and do what we're capable of doing, especially on offense. Uh, you know, so many um, opportunities left out on the field this week, um, you know, and, and so many end zone opportunities that I feel like we missed. And um, we got, you know, this weapon here and this weapon there and, and, and you know, the spiel. And um, I just want to see us, 
really finish and finish on an SEC opponent. And so I'm excited to see what Weiss schemes up this week and, and Kiffin and, and what we get rolling. So I'm pumped. I hear we travel well to Nashville, too. I don't know yeah. if that's true. Everybody travels well to Nashville. I'm going to ask you about that in a second. Uh, we're, we're also brought to you by Liston D's. It's a full-service law firm located in Ridgeland, uh, Mississippi. It focuses on complex civil litigation. Liston and D's clients include individuals, businesses, and state governments throughout the United States. Yeah, uh, Ole Miss travels really well in general, but they obviously travel well to Nashville. Nashville's quite the party town, and, uh, you know, you mentioned Broadway. I think there probably will be some people who make it to Broadway Friday, <laughs> Friday night, Saturday. I'm guessing. Are you a country music guy? You 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 would you strike? Well, yeah, I dabble in country music. country music. I like I like uh, I like rap too, but uh, country music is is in my heart. You know that's why I'm a Texan. So uh, <laughs> I love me some country music, some live country music, really, and so that's exciting. Um, did, how often did you get down to Nashville when you were at Western Kentucky? It feels like that would be a, a natural place to go uh, yeah. for a week. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, there's so many there's... times you can go to the Outback and burn <laughs> the room you're like, you know what? Let's go to Nashville. You know what, guys? I'm done going to Outback. Um, <laughs> we, we, they're very strict down there with their uh, identifications at the doors, you know? And yeah. we, I'm a big, big law follower, big, you know, Way to call him 21er. And so, uh, you know, when we were able to finally get down there, when we uh, got a little older, we made a pretty big habit of it. It's not a cheap uh, trip, as we come to find out. Um, The beverages and whatnot are very expensive. And the first time we were down there, we realized very quickly that we were a little bit out of our element (laughs) as West Kentucky football (laughs) players. And so um, we kind of figured out some, some schemes and stuff. I had a good friend that went to Belmont. And so we would kind of use his house as, as home base and uh, we go out from there. But it is um, like the Grove um, density, but just uh, in a downtown area. It is uh, thick and hot. Um, and I am thick uh, as an individual and I get hot. And so it's very sweaty for me. So some, some weekends were better than others. Uh, I liked when the weather was better. Um, so forewarned, if you're going to go to Broadway at night, do not wear a coat or a hoodie if you are a big person because you will sweat. Um, but, you know, it's it's a, it's a cool town. There's a lot of good food, kind of like Austin, um, only a little bit more uh, southern, a little less keep Austin weird, a um, little different vibe. But I like it a lot. So. Yeah, Austin's got more of a almost an L.A. vibe. and Yeah, the L.A. of the. LA of the South, if you will. It's definitely got some. Yeah. And Nashville has a certain Texas vibe to it. Honestly, they should switch. <laughs> no, my daughter talks about Austin. She's like, I just love Austin. I'm like, well, you haven't lived there yet. And if you live there, it might be different. But all I can tell you is it's really expensive. And when you're paying your own way, you might not like it as much. Um, let's see. Uh, Trying to think what else I wanted to get to you with. What I th- you said, you have a couple things you wanted to touch on. So, have we touched everything, or is there something else you wanted to get to? Uh, let me think. Um, what I want to touch on. Uh, I didn't even didn't even attempt to go out last night. Um, not because I don't love the town, but because I didn't want to the 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 sweat situation to happen again. So I ended up just hanging out here. But from what I heard, you know, the fan base was was really supportive, and so um, it's just cool. Um, you know, seeing seeing all these these fans, uh, you know, come together for us, and 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 that was cool. And uh, we did the Grove uh, press conference, and uh, they're doing some really fun stuff. That was exciting once again to kind of see the community come together. And um, you know, I'm just very encouraged by um, you know our fan base, and that's very exciting to me. So I just kind of look forward to you know seeing how that continues to flow, um, you know, throughout the season and whatnot. But um no it was uh you mentioned mentoring some and being there for the guys and watching from the sideline and telling guys what you see has has any of this at all led to you even considering a a dabbling in coaching or or anything like that or do you have other other certain plans coming out of of college i'll tell you what this has done is it it has made me um you know understand how um how fleeting football is you know as a player and Especially a player that's found some success, I think it's easy to kind of be like, "Man, this is this is what I'm made to do, and this is what I'm going to do." And uh, you know, I'm a religious guy, and you know, I've been you know a lot of prayer and 
and thought. And, and um, I think God has kind of showed me, hey, you know, there's lots of other avenues um, and there's a lot more going on than just, uh, you know, you being an offensive tackle and, uh, you know, whether it's coaching or, uh, you know, something around the game. Um, you know, I don't think I want to just totally step away from the game, but it, it's made me realize, um, you know, I can use my leadership qualities, whether I'm playing or not. And, uh, you know, I have the I have the wisdom um, just from the playing experience to be able to help these cats uh, push them during the week in practice. Um, you know, it's not like there's just a random random guy out there. You know, I have the experience and the ability and, you know, I feel like I'm I, I could not skip a beat if I went in, but that's just not where I'm at right now. And, um, you know, being OK with that and, and having a good attitude about that a truly good attitude about that is something that's difficult to wrestle with um, and something that I've learned to kind of, um, you know, work through. And so I'm grateful for Ole Miss, like beyond, um, you know, what's been given to me and, and, and you know, what I've received and um, the playing X, Y, Z, just because um, I've already learned so much more about myself and, um, this community and how, how loving and supporting this community is. I haven't had anyone come up to me um, and make any snarky remarks or anything. It's all, it's all been very um, supportive and, and, uh, and exciting. So, you know, maybe coaching, maybe, um, maybe business, maybe radio. I, I don't know. Um, you know, I, the, the possibility is really out there, but um, just really excited that I've, I've learned so much about myself in the past really three months and, and, and how tough I can be and, and how good of an attitude I can have despite things not going my way, because it's, it's easy to say, well, oh, I have a good attitude. And then, um, you know, then, then things don't pan out and you're really forced to come face to face with your character and who you are as a person. And that's, that's something different. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you look back on things that happen and you think, man, at the time I thought that was the worst thing that ever happened to me. And it turns out maybe it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. I'm not saying that's happening to you. I'm just saying that does happen. And, and some, yeah. sometimes it's about, it's literally just kind of about how you, the attitude that you handle adversity with. So uh, I've had so many people reach out to me kind of just raving about the way you've handled everything that you've done. And, and you know, one thing I've learned in football covering it, you've learned it playing it obviously but seasons are long and things happen and a lot of times the people at the end of the season who end up being heroes of a season were not the heroes of the season at the beginning of a season that seasons uh seasons develop they take on a, yeah. a life of their own and and it's somewhat unpredictable you, you know like you talked about missouri and georgia last night i mean who would have ever thought that saw that coming but Stuff happens, and uh, it's a game where, I mean, you guys, you know, have had to shuffle because of injuries and stuff, and it's a physical game, and there's nobody, get, nobody gets a guarantee each day that hey, you're gonna, you're gonna get get out of this game completely healthy and ready to go next week. It just doesn't work like that. So, it's a long season, and it's been, uh, it's been fun following it with you, and we'll continue to do it um, here each and every week on the Mason Brooks Show. Again, we're brought to you by the Rogue. Uh, 4450 I-55 North in Jackson or the rogue.com. The calendar has turned to October. You know, the one after that is November. And then the one after that is December. So if you're thinking about gifting and things, uh, check out the rogue. You can get some of that taken care of as the uh, holidays do indeed approach pretty quickly. I like that little calendar Christmas plug. That was good. That yeah, was creative. Yeah. Done it. Done this for a few minutes, Mason. I, I, <laughs> every once in a while, I sort of know what I'm doing. <laughs> not all the time, not all the time, but okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I had you guys winning by four, you and you won by three. I felt like I was I was pretty pretty pumped with that. Then of course I had Jacksonville winning, and and they're not. So it happens. Um, highs and lows, highs and lows, highs and lows, and you just have to you have to handle the adversity and there you go, you got it, you can yeah, exactly. There you go. All right, we'll be back uh, next week. We'll look back at uh, Ole Miss and uh, Vanderbilt, and we'll look ahead to another home Saturday in the Grove and it brought Hemingway as the Auburn Tigers will be heading to town uh, for the, an October 15th game uh, in Oxford against the Rebels. So for Mason Brooks, I'm Neil McCready. Thanks for uh, making us a part of your week here on the Mason Brooks show. We'll be back next week. Until then, take care.